Coming up are a couple of my favorite videos in this entire course, and I know you're going to enjoy them as well, because not only are we covering important theory and we're going to see it in action, but I'm going to share an extra couple of real-world gotchas that you're not going to see pop up on your exam, but you are going to see them in the real world, and I've seen them in the real world, and I would rather you learned about them now uh, and, learn and learn and enjoy from my pain uh, when I accidentally deleted an entire access list that I didn't mean to. And I'm going to show you how to avoid that in the next couple of videos as well. But plenty of things you're going to see on the exam, including uh, time ranges, some sequence numbers, and a couple of other goodies here tied in. Now, we are picking up at the end of the last lab where we had routers 1, 2, and 3 on the 172.12.123.0.24 network. And right now, router 1 is allowing router 2 to telnet in, as, as uh, verified by line 10 there in show IP access list. And we're denying everybody else. So right now, router 3 at 172.12.123.3 cannot telnet in. We're going to change that a bit. Also, I wanted to call your attention, of course, this is a good reason why we would add an explicit deny to the end of an ACL is that that way you get to see the number of matches because if we just went with the implicit deny that would have been fine but we wouldn't see anything here we would just see line 10. Also a successful telnet attempt that goes through an ACL is going to show as two matches. I've seen that before and I've seen it for a long time and I've never seen anybody actually explain why but that does happen. So we've got two successful telnet attempts from router 2. One of them I did off camera during our break and then another one from router 3 that uh, was unsuccessful. I did that during the break as well. So that's why the matches look a little bit different than they did at the end of the last video. Time ranges really come in handy though, especially when you run into real world situations where you want a line or two or three of an ACL to be enforced some of the time. Because sometimes you don't want to block access to something all the time. Sometimes you don't want to permit access to something all the time. And that can particularly come in handy with Telnet. Because let's just say you decide, hey, from 9 to 5, someone should be allowed to Telnet into my router and otherwise forget it. Or you could also have a server that's going to be offline for a while. You don't want anybody even accessing that particular IP address. You could knock it out with an ACL and say, okay, for a couple of hours, I want this to just block traffic. I'll show you how to do both of those. We've got two different kinds of time ranges. The first one you're going to see much more often than the other. So we're going to do that one first. And you're always going to start with the time range command. Now, I would give the time range an intuitive name. And just a little bit of a dad lecture here. Never give anything a name on a Cisco router that you don't want to read out loud at a meeting. Okay? And you're laughing at that, and I'm kind of chuckling myself, but I remember someone having to do that. It was not me. And uh, they weren't terribly offensive names, but someone took offense anyway. So we move forward with time range telnet allowed, and you see that we drop into the time range config mode. And not a lot of choices here, especially considering three of them are default, exit, and no. Absolute and periodic are the two that we're going to use. And really, you see periodic more often. And what we do with periodic is set up a time range that's going to recur. Like say we want something to happen every weekday or we want it to happen uh, you know, every weekend or every Tuesday night, something like that. Where absolute lets us define an absolute start time and an absolute finish time and that's it. And we'll use both. I'll, I'll show you both of them but I really want to show you periodic and that's where we're going to spend most of our time. So let's go with periodic. And as you can see, you, know, you could list multiples of these as far as the days of the week go. If you put Friday and then want to put something else, you'll notice that the daily, weekdays, and weekend choices, they disappear. So if you want to put a couple days of the weekend, you, know, you certainly can. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday if you want to, but daily is a good way to go as well. So uh, actually, we're going to go with weekdays on this and do Monday through Friday. And now you have to define a starting time. And we're going to go with 9 a.m. And you literally have to put the word 2 there. And 50, uh, we're going to go with 1700 here, 5 p.m. And the ending time stays valid until beginning of the next minute. That sounds like nothing, but I remember having arguments about that in CCI lab prep. You'd be glad you weren't there. So we've got 9 to 5 so far. We need 1,700 there, actually, for 5 p.m. And that is it. Not a lot of options here. 
and congratulations, you just wrote your first time range. Now, obviously, you have to apply it somewhere, and we're going to do that at the end of an access list line. You're never going to write an access list line and then type time range at the end and actually type what the range is. You're going to type the name of the range. What I would recommend you do before you do that is do a quick show time range command. And we've got a couple here. We've got one from Thursday that's inactive, and that was probably on from a previous lab. And you also see that we have telnet allowed, and that's the one we're concentrating on. It's the one we just wrote. And we could go in and take Thursday off. As a matter of fact, why don't we do that? Good practice. Just do a no time range. Thursday. And we'll do show time range again. And there you go. Every once in a while, you find a command you can't negate in Cisco by putting the word no in front of it, but it's rare. You might see that here, or it might negate too much. But let's stay with our time range for right now. Telnet allowed, inactive, periodic weekdays, 900 hours to 1,700 hours. Why do we see inactive? Do we see inactive because it's not tied to an ACL yet? No. We see inactive because actually that means the system time is not in this range. It doesn't mean that you haven't finished configuring it yet. And if we do a quick show clock right here, you'll see that it is 1724 hours on Wednesday. So we're about 24 minutes late. So we will come back and reset the clock to a time when it would be active. But first, let's see what it looks like when it's inactive. We need to go ahead and add that list. We need to get the access list rolling. So we're on access list 101. And we're going to do a permit TCP host 172.12.123.3. And then we're going to put a destination of any. And then we're going to specify the time range. And now I'm going to move the screen over. It's still going to go off the line. So I want you to see what happens to the front of the, at the very, at the pound sign where the A is. Watch what happens when I type this in and it goes off screen. You see a dollar sign there. And it's really odd <laughs> the first time you see it. Uh, and especially if you're in the middle of an IP address, it's going to look like you typed in some kind of monetary amount. But don't worry about it. Just keep configuring it. And then just run show IP access list when you're done. And this is what you get. Now notice that we also see the word inactive here in show IP access list, which is great. We just know that right now that particular line is inactive because it's outside of the time range. However, let me give you a pop quiz. We know that line 30 will not be met right now because that line is inactive. So it's not even going to be run. What, what's the net effect then of our current list? What happens when we are in the time range? Like someone tries to telnet in from 123.3 at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, what's going to happen? They're going to be denied, right? Because let's look at that ACL. We're going top to bottom. It doesn't match line 10. Everything matches line 20. If it, if it doesn't match line 10, it matches line 20. Therefore, even when line 30 is active, it's going to be red. Or not red, excuse me. So we need to do something here as far as getting that third line above deny IP any any in our ACL. And we're going to do that with a little help from sequence numbers and your introduction to sequence numbers and going back to ACL config mode and a couple of other real world gotchas. That's coming up next.